Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. This is Jeff with Fluent American checking in. Let's make sure we're all set up here. So again, we're gonna be focusing today on speaking about apartments, a quick little living space. We're gonna describe this picture a little bit um, as I go through this. If you have questions about any vocab or things like that, be sure to let me know and I'll be happy to talk about them in more detail. And then towards the end, of course, we'll go through how to actually pronounce these things, see if there's any expressions we want to add and things like that. Um, so again, welcome. It's great to have you. Um, I'll also be posting some links to some other resources that I think will be helpful to this um, as we discuss. Um, but again, we're going to be describing apartments, um, living spaces, um, key vocab that I think will be helpful for you. Okay. Um, so as you can see in this picture, this looks to be about a studio apartment, although it's nice because it has that little separation with the kitchen area um, and the bathroom and things. So let's start just kind of doing some quick vocab for what we see. Okay, so firstly, towards the top, the very starting from the top to the bottom, that top part you see, this is going to be the ceiling. Okay, so sometimes students confuse ceilings with roofs and things like that. Um, so that's something you just kind of want to be mindful of. Don't confuse those things. The ceiling is on the inside and the roof is on the outside. So the roof, like when it rains and things like that, the water is hitting the roof on the inside, which you, when you look up, when you're falling asleep, that's going to be the ceiling. Okay, so we have the ceiling up top. You have a light, sometimes also referred to as a light fixture, just to give you a heads up. So if people ask you like, oh, like you, you really like the light fixture or something like that, um, that's what they're talking about, talking about the light, okay? So we just have the ceiling with the light fixture. This little, you can see like around the room, like where the ceiling and the wall meet. It's like, here's your wall, here's your ceiling, and then we have this like line thing. Like, well, what is, what is this that goes around the room? Well, this is called the molding. The molding is used to kind of just, I don't know, it's like a fancy way of making it look a little nicer between, um, like, so you're not seeing like cracks or weird spaces or things like that. So that's again called the molding. The molding is again places where you have separation between um, two different surfaces, like a wall to a wall or a wall to a ceiling, things like that. Okay. Moving on down again, so we have the wall itself. It looks to me like this wall is a little bit textured. It looks like it has some wallpaper on it, so it doesn't look just like a painted wall. It looks like there's some sort of wallpaper that's covering all the surfaces. Okay, so we have some wallpaper. And then moving on down the wall to the, towards the floor. Again, we wouldn't call this molding or no it's kind of like molding this is called like a baseboard it's like base b-a-s-e and then board b-o-a-r-d okay so again we have the molding up top and then we have the baseboard connecting your floor to your wall your baseboard all right and then we have the floor itself now it's a little bit hard to tell from a picture but you can see that this floor looks a little bit like wood, although it's also super shiny. My guess is that this floor is what we would call laminate. Laminate is not wood. It's usually plastic or some other similar type material that's designed to look like wood. Um, but it tends to be a little bit cheaper than wood and a little bit easier to maintain. Okay, so it looks like it's like a laminate flooring you could say laminate flooring, a laminate floor. Um, you can also call it like a wood laminate because it looks like wood. Okay. So you have laminate flooring. And again, laminate flooring, it tends to be like if you rub your hand along it, it's very, very smooth. Okay. So we have laminate flooring down there. Other just some structural things that we see. Right here, I'm guessing that this is probably the light switch probably for the bathroom but maybe also for the kitchen okay but again you could just call this the lights or you could call it the light switch okay. and a quick note about that like a lot of times 
I have a lot of students that say like like open the lights or things like that. But the best verb is actually going to be like turn on. Like turn on the lights. Or instead of saying close the lights, you want to say turn off the lights. So turn on the lights or turn off the lights. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, then on the left hand side of the picture, what we can see. So over here we have the window sill. The window sill is like that, especially like this part here, that little space between the wall and the actual window, the glass. This is the, the window sill. When you say window sill, you want to stress window, not sill. So it's not window sill, it's window sill. This is a compound noun. So you want to make sure that you're stressing that right. Okay. So we have our window sill. Other things. Hey Rod, great to have you here. Sorry I missed the original thing. That thing's too high. Let me move this down. Okay, so we have the windowsill. And of course, if you have other questions about houses or living spaces that I don't cover as I go through this, or questions on pronunciation or things like that, be sure to let me know. Okay, so we have the windowsill with the windows. A quick note for windows. Um, the actual glass of a window is called the pane. P-A-N-E not P-A-I-N. It's like the window pane. That's going to be the actual glass. Okay. So we can't actually see the window pane. It's a little bit too bright. But we can see some other, we can see another pane of glass. So for instance, in this door that they have to the kitchen, you can have it, there's another, there's a pane of glass right here. And notice that you can't see through that pane. Okay. So you can call it opaque. Okay, if something is opaque, that means you can't see through it. So this is going to be so they have some opaque glass, so you can't actually see through that glass. You may also hear like frosted. You can see that this is like frosted glass. Okay, because frosted almost like it looks like it's covered with frost. Okay, so I'll write that as well. So again, frosted in the door that leads to the kitchen. Okay, what else do we have going on? So we can see the doorway to the left. This is actually going to be the bathroom. Okay, I don't think there's any major surprises there. Okay, we can't see a whole lot of the bathroom, but we can see a couple of things. For instance, we can see this white porcelain thing. This is gonna be the sink. So we can see the sink. And then, so a sink has many different parts, right? So the top part of the sink where the water actually comes out, and you control the water, this will be the faucet. Okay, so you have the sink. The sink is the part that has the drain, where the water comes down, and things like that. The faucet is where the water actually comes out. That's going to be your faucet. Um, if there's other parts of the bathroom that you see that you have questions about, be sure to let me know. It looks like on the floor, I'm going to guess that this is almost, I'm going to guess that this is a drain. The drain is where water goes down. Okay, so you have drains in your sink. So in your kitchen, in your bathroom, maybe even if you have a basement, sometimes there's a sink down there too. Those are all called drains. Okay. And the drain is, again, where the water goes down, relying on gravity. Some quick things that we see in the kitchen. I'm just going to change the color so we're not confusing ourselves too much. Possible. So, this part right here, this to me looks like the oven. So, the oven again is used more for like baking things if you're into baking. The top part is going to be called the stove. So, the stove is where you cook things like in a pan. Okay, like whether you're frying something, sauteing something, um, even if you have the right equipment for it, grilling something, it's going to be on the stove. Okay. In addition, in a kitchen, you need lots of storage. Storage for plates, storage for dishes, storage for pots and pans. You're probably going to be storing them in a cabinet. Okay. So kitchens have cabinets. Another word that you may hear instead of cabinet is you may hear people call them cupboards. So cabinet, 
for a cupboard. Watch the spelling for cupboard, because that P you're not really going to hear. It's going to be kind of taken over by that B sound. Cupboard, cupboard. And again, at the end, we'll go over all the pronunciation for these words. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate it, Rob. Um, so we have the cabinet, we have the cupboard, we have the light fixture. Uh, it looks like uh, a little bit hard to see, but it looks like we had the sink over there in the corner. Okay. But yeah, so that's pretty much we have a bathroom vocab, some kitchen vocab from what we can see. We can start talking about a little bit of some of the furniture. So we're, for instance, in that bottom corner, we can talk a little bit about right here is the mattress. Place where you sleep. Okay. What's the difference between a mattress and a bed? Well, a mattress is a part of your bed. Okay, the mattress is the soft part that you lie down on. Okay, it's the top part of the bed. So a lot of times, in addition to the mattress, you also have what's called a box spring. It's like the box spring is kind of like what lifts the bed up. So if you have two parts, if your bed has two parts, it probably is going to have a mattress on top and then the, the box spring underneath it. And the box spring just elevates um, the mattress off the bed. Oh, right. I was, I was always wondering where you're from. Okay, so you're from Brazil. What city are you from? Are you affected by the forest fires at all? Are you doing okay? Uh, let me know when you have a minute. Um, also, just a quick break on some things too while we're at it. Um, for those of you who are interested in studying um, speech, um, intonation, you're wondering, you know, why, maybe you're asking yourself, why do I sound different than native speakers. Well, one thing that we do is we have a workshop called Native U, because like Native University. Um, and we're having our next one on a week from now, a week from today, at about 930 in the morning, New York time. And basically what we do is we look at a conversation between native speakers, and we're just analyzing what they do. Okay, so we're looking at their intonation, we're looking at their linking, we're looking at their pronunciation, pitch, all these things in about 30 minutes to try to get an idea of what are the techniques that native speakers are doing in English. Um, so then you can start applying it to your own speech and start sounding more natural, feeling more confident, um, and feeling like you belong. You know? Okay, and Sao Paulo. Inter I have not heard of Intertel. Okay. Um, yeah, I know I have some, one of, some of my other students who actually live in Sao Paulo, they said they're, they're doing okay it's not too bad yeah that's what they were saying okay so I'm glad I'm glad you guys are safe um, I know the US has been going through some fires as well <laughs> on the West Coast everything's burning the world's crazy this year 2020 um, but yeah for our native our native you workshop it's gonna be five dollars to join us um, if you're interested you can send me an email at speakfluentamerican at gmail.com where you can leave a comment and I will try to get back to you to help you register um, yes yeah, so that's gonna be next week um, we also have another video that talks about the, um, that basically was a free version of the native you. So if you have in questions about that, um, you can check out our other video on YouTube to get an idea about what we actually do. Okay. I know so many teach, so many teachers find me, especially like, um, AFL teachers like people that have learned English and things. Um, that's great. If there's other content, um, that would be helpful for you as a teacher. Um, be sure to let me know. I'd like to have some more resources that are available for you. Yeah. Always good to meet more teachers. Teachers are great. Um, teachers can make some of the best <laughs> and some of the hardest students. Um, some other quick things. So again, we talked about the mattress on the floor. Uh, we talked about the laminate flooring. So I guess we should move over to, so we have our TV, of course. Okay. This box right here, I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to guess that this is a, let me get a brighter color, a little easier to see. I'm going to guess that this is a, a cable box. Cable box used to, um, I mean, if you want anything beyond your basic channels, you'll need to get some sort of cable box, right? Okay. And then this whole thing, this piece of furniture that it's on, a common thing you could call this like a, a chest of drawers. Okay. Chest of drawers. And then that's kind of what each one of these things are. 
every one of these, these would all be called drawers. Okay, where you can store things, typically clothes, I would imagine. Okay. We see other furniture that you can use for storage too. I mean, this looks like about a studio apartment, so naturally storage is gonna be really important. So over here you have a wardrobe where you can put more clothes. Okay, so you have a wardrobe over here. Okay. And it looks like this one might be built in, but it might be separate. I would call this one over here for clothing, this one a closet. Okay, so they have a wardrobe, they have a closet, I'm trying to make sure that they have space. Um, to fit things. This <laughs> space is always a premium when you have a tiny apartment. Okay. Outside of that, if we look to the right, we can see it looks like they have the the main door that you enter, I'm gonna guess. Which would make this the front door. Okay. So you have your front door here. And then like if you go like in some living spaces, what they, they kind of have like a, a room. It's not quite a room, it's a little bit more open than a room, it's kind of like an entryway. Um, and you'll hear people refer to that often as like the foyer or the foyer. And it's kind of again that entryway from the front door. You walk in, it's a little space. Um, take off your shoes, um, kind of is just like first enter into a a residence, um, that would be your foyer or your foyer. Okay. All right. So again, this is the basic info that I'm seeing here for an apartment or a studio. Okay. Um, let's just kind of go over all the pronunciations for things because lots of different vowel sounds and things. Um, let's go through all the words. And again, if you have questions or things, just let me know and I can, I'm happy to repeat. Um, up top, ceiling. Ceiling. A quick note on that. So the eel. So you have that long vowel sound, the eel, eel. So it's going to break into two parts. Seal. Ceiling. Ceiling. Next one, light fixture. Light fixture. Compound noun. We've talked about compound nouns before, but when this happens, you want to make sure you're stressing the first word. Light fixture. Next, connecting the ceiling again to the wall, we have the molding. Molding. Like an O sound, like an O. You may also hear this referred to as the crown molding. The crown molding being especially the molding that's connecting the, the walls to the ceiling. Because that, again, that would be called often the crown molding. Crown molding. Okay. Next one, bathroom. Bathroom. Watching out for those TH sounds. Um, we have lots of other videos talking about THs, but just a quick tip. Um, the, the very tip of your tongue, just pressing lightly against the back of your top front tooth. It's like bath. Bath. It's not bat. It's not bad. It's bath. Bathroom. Bathroom. If that THR combination is difficult, and for some people it can be, um, what I would suggest is pronounce the TH first. Make that really clear before focusing on the R. So not, don't rush it. Take it a little slower. Bathroom. Bathroom. If that's a tricky word to say. Okay. Underneath that, we have the faucet. Aw, like in law. So again, the back of your tongue is high, front of your tongue is down, and your mouth wide. Aw, fa, faucet, faucet. Also notice that last syllable more, sit, sit, like S-I-T. It almost gets reduced to like a short I sound. Sit, faucet, faucet. Okay, and then the water goes down the sink, sink. Okay, and then in the sink there is the drain, drain, where the water actually empties into the drain. Up top, um, move it up, wardrobe, wardrobe. Watch out for drobe, especially the dr, dr. When you have the letters dr together, it makes like a dr, sounds almost like a j, like in judge, but it's a slight r attached to it, dr, wardrobe. The window pane, the window pane. Okay, and again, stressing window, because that's a compound noun. Next one below that would be window sill, window sill. And again, stressing window, not sill. The mattress, mattress, ah, sound like in cat, so your mouth is wide, back of your tongue down, front of your tongue down, but the middle of your tongue a little high. And again, when you make that ah sound like a mattress, you want to make sure that you can see the middle of your tongue, ah, ah, mattress, okay. Um, opeg, 
opaque. Again, we were describing the glass. You can't see through the glass. You can say it's opaque. You can also say it's frosted. Frosted. Um, just another quick note before we move on. Some other things. If you'd like to join um, our pronunciation group. So we have a pronunciation group on Telegram. And basically what we do is every day I give a challenge. So just a couple of quick sounds, one or two sounds. And then you have the opportunity to reply. And then I give you feedback. So every day you're getting feedback. Um, if you're interested in getting access to this sort of group, um, it costs $5 a month. Okay, And what that does is, first of all, in every one of our main YouTube videos, so the ones on Sunday and Wednesday, um, you'll get a shout out as thanks because I do appreciate it. But then you'll also get access to our Telegram group for that month. Okay, So if you're looking for daily pronunciation practice, but you're like, I don't know if I can afford a pronunciation class. You know, some teachers, I was looking at online teachers today, and like some people are charging like $30, $40, $45, like a lesson just for a pronunciation class. And that's a lot, right? Um, this is a great option, okay? Because again, for just $5, you're getting feedback every single day of the week, okay? Um, $5 for a month, okay? Not just every day of the week. You're getting, <laughs> you're getting feedback every day of a month, okay? So $5, you can join our Telegram group get feedback every single day, much, much, much cheaper than a pronunciation course. Um, and you're still getting some quick practice in because we do, again, we do a challenge every day. Um, so that's a great option for you. Um, if you're interested in that, um, again, we're on Patreon. If you go to patreon.com slash fluent American, you can find us there. Um, so again, if you're looking for a cheaper option than a pronunciation class, you just want some quick feedback, some quick reminders to study pronunciation. Um, that's what the Telegram group is for. I'm just a quick note about that. Um, next one, talking a little bit of, oh, about the glass too. We said that the glass opaque and then frosted, frosted. So getting that O, you can either pronounce it with an aw sound like in law or saw, or you can pronounce it with an ah sound, ah, ah. So frosted or frosted, either one of those will be fine. Just heads up, you may hear my son in the background because it is nap time. He needs to get ready for sleep my wife's with him um, moving down on the floor we said this looks to me like laminate laminate notice that the last ate gets reduced to like a short i so instead of laminate it's more laminate laminate flooring laminate flooring laminate is a different thing it's a verb it's slightly different than what we're talking about here so if you're describing your floor you can say like oh we have laminate flooring okay also connecting your floor again to your wall. We said was a baseboard, stressing base, baseboard, baseboard, okay? Talking about some of those kitchen terms. So again, cabinet, cabinet, stress the first syllable, cab, ass sound like in cat, ca, cabinet, cabinet. Next, where you cook on top of the oven is called the stove, stove, often with fire, although you may have an electric one. So again, stove, stove, and then if you want to bake something or roast it, then you have the oven, oven. Um, we talked about walls. Notice again for wall, even though you see the letters A-L-L, -L, when you have that aw sound, you don't actually need to pronounce the L, treat like a dark L. So it's like wall, wall. You can also see beneath that wallpaper. So if you don't have paint on your walls, you probably have wallpaper, wallpaper. Stressing wall again. It's not wallpaper, it's wallpaper. After that, we have the cable box. The cable box, so that way you can access TV, things like that. You have a chest of drawers, um, which all that furniture is sitting on, including the TV. A quick note about abbreviations. If you have questions about abbreviations, we have a video on that as well. Um, but TV, you want to stress a V. Stress the last letter of abbreviations, TV. Last couple words, closet. Again, ah sound, ah in American English. Cla, like in stop, cla. Closet, mouth wide, back of tongue down, front of tongue down. The entry will be your front door. Front door. It's your front door. Usually stressing door. Um, next word, again, that little entry area would be your foyer or your foyer. Foyer, foyer. All right, guys. Those are most of the words that I have. I haven't seen many other questions and things related to pronunciation for apartments and things like that. 
But like I said, please do check out things like our Patreon group. Also take a look at um, our upcoming intonation workshop. We still have some spots open for students. Again, registration will be $5. Um, it will be great to have you join us. Uh, my name is Jeff, again, with Fluent American. Thank you guys so much with your, for your time. Um, I will see you in a future video. Um, tomorrow, our video is coming out. We'll be taking a look at another celebrity and how they speak in English, um, things that they're doing well, and things that maybe they need to, if they want to sound more natural, things they could do to improve. Um, if there are other people that you think would be great for us to analyze for pronunciation, um, be sure to let me know because I'd be happy to take a look at their speech. But th thank you guys so much for your time. I will see you in a future video. Um, have a good day, have a good night, have a good afternoon. Take care.